Hey guys, Noel here, and it is Wednesday, and while I've got a little bit of free time, I thought it'd be fun to do a product review for the video game review section of the Noel Comics YouTube channel. One of the uh, things that I've been liking to relax to uh, recently are the Satoshi Matrix YouTube channel's content uh, where he reviews Famiclones, or uh, unofficial NES players, see how well he plays uh, those games and how well uh, these pieces of hardware play those games. And, you know, I've done similar content on the channel uh, in the past, testing the At Games Sega Genesis, uh, both the HD versions and the low-def versions. So I thought, you know, about a year ago, Santino and I unboxed this very cool product. It is the Hyperkin Miami Vice colored uh, NES player with micro USB charger in the back uh, port and uh, mono composite video for your hookup. For, and it's you know gonna work best on a CRT since composite video is kind of designed for CRTs and by kind of I mean completely. Uh, so this is a very nice console. It's very lightweight, compact, you know, it has a kind of a Famicom-ish NES top loader vibe. Uh, it is a top loader, so you're not going to have to worry about, you know, busting pins as you, you know, slide your uh, disc in your VCR-esque NES toaster. But how well does this play your NES games? So we're going to actually check that out because in the video unboxing video that Santino and I did for this about a year ago, we didn't really test many games on it. We just kind of threw in Konami's YY World and was like, it works, awesome, the end. So... Uh, we're going to uh, test how well games play on this, and we're going to run it against another, um, I guess you could say, third-party Nintendo player, but this is basically an official third-party Nintendo player, by which I mean it is the Sharp Twin Famicom right here. So we're going to have this, which plays uh, Famicom uh, games perfectly, and we're going to, you know, see how well those games play on... This, the Twin Famicom, versus this, the Hyperkin um, Miami Vice colored NES player. I do want to make special note of the awesome controller, which has, you know, grips in the back and a nice little slope for the spot in between your thumb and index finger. So you're not like stabbing yourself and like busting nerves. You can, this is a very luxurious controller experience here. Um, so we'll start off testing out Super Mario, okay, on the Famicom versus Super Mario on the Miami Vice colored Hyperkin player and see how it goes. This beta movie sticker I just put on here for the authentic 80s aesthetic. This sadly did not come with a beta movie sticker on it, but... We do have a nice beta VCR right here, so good times. All right, so we're going to hook this up. Now, I like to hook this up with um, not like kind of crazy heavyweighted gold-plated cables, but a nice thick, with several C's, uh, composite video cables here. So, um, or I should say component video cables. So, you buy a nice pair of component video cables that are designed to, you know, give you a nice shielded quality video signal that's not going to be like too heavy duty and just like kind of rip out the, the circuitry of the back. Like I did that with a, my Retron, um, one of these. I put really heavy gold plated cables in the back and when I went to go pull them out, like it just messed up the inside of the console. Um, so I just have some nice component video cables to get a nice clear signal on this and then really any micro usb that if you have an android phone or any kind of device like that will work on this thing here and when you power it on it has a very uh, pretty you know blue light which you can see right here so let's uh, get down to testing some games on this see how well it plays we'll contrast it to the famicom twin famicom uh, and uh, see how it goes. We'll play some uh, real uh, authentic 1980s hardware. We'll play some repros. We'll compare and contrast. See how it goes. Let's have some fun. All right, so we're going to square up and we're going to use this on the uh, greatest composite video monitor ever made, in my opinion, the Amdec Color 1. This is a, this is a quality piece of machinery right here. 
and uh, this is from 1983. It's new old stock, and uh, you can also see Santino and I do an unboxing video of this. So let's get this on the right channel here. I think this is on line one. And uh, here we go. We have Mario and Duck Hunt, and let's just start out with some Mario. And you'll notice right away that uh, this is very, very vibrant. I just, I feel like the colors are a little more saturated on this, which is not a bad thing. Um, and you're going to see here the music is a little loud on this as well. I'm going to shut the blinds here so we don't get any excessive glare. And uh, we'll sit back and enjoy this hardware review. Okay. Okay. This is the Hyperkin right here. And this is playing very smoothly. Uh, the audio is a little... Not bad, but you might arguably say... I mean, shrill isn't the right word. Kind of... It's a little sharp. It's a little sharp and, like, kind of quasi-staticky, I guess would be a good way to put it here. But you can clearly see I'm playing this with uh, no problem here. And Mario looks great going through composite video right here. So, like, uh, video-wise, I mean, if you were kind of, like, comparing this to, let's say, an American top loader that was default only RF, this is going to give you a much superior picture, uh, albeit, uh, you'll see with some games, this will not play as well. Because some of the later Nintendo uh, Famicom games got really advanced with the chips inside the cartridges and whatnot. And uh, they were kind of designed with uh, actual proprietary hardware in mind. Okay, so that's Mario on the uh, Miami Vice Hyperkin. Let's see how Mario plays on the uh, Twin Famicom. Okay, well, you can clearly see not as well, because this cartridge is uh, kind of, uh, you know, older and from Japan. Let's uh, blow on it here. All right, I know we're not supposed to do that ideally, but it does work. So, see, it works. Now, this here, you, I think you get a little more well-balanced color for the picture. Um, it's not quite as vibrant, but it's sharper. You'll notice right away, the volume is not as loud. But it's more balanced. So, this sounds, uh, much more, I think... Uh, e it's a little easier on the ears here. Gameplay just as fluid. Colors beautifully sharp, perfectly balanced. I mean, the color is kind of up to you if you prefer the more saturated video output of the Hyperkin versus the more, uh, I guess you could say, balanced video output of the Twin Famicom. Ooh, fireworks. Now, my Twin Famicom, I do have going through uh, some nice monster composite cables here, so trying to make sure I have, you know, really good quality cables here. Ooh, 
we so I would say that the audio is better on the actual proprietary slash sharp hardware um, but the hyperkin and the video is a little clearer and less saturated but that's kind of a personal preference for you so this is uh, basically uh, Mario the way it's meant to be played as opposed to uh, you know a really uh, nice cost-effective Nintendo player which will not have as many problems as your uh, front-loading uh, Nintendo in terms of gameplay. So, let's try something a little crazy here. Now, in the uh, Twin Famicom, I have a Bio Miracle Bokute Upa, uh, which is, uh, you know, this game here I have in repro form. So, we're going to try a repro form game and then see how it plays on the Miami Vice uh, NES player versus the actual Famicom Disk System version, which I have loaded in the, uh, you know, the Twin Famicom. At least I think I do. This is the, uh, yeah, I do. This is the actual disc for Bio Miracle Upa right here. So this is a really good game, good platformer from Konami. do do, -do. Okay, so just try a nice repro here. I like repro games uh, because you can actually get the NES games that look like Famicom games because Famicom games were much prettier than NES games. NES games were kind of utilitarian, whereas the actual Famicom games are very colorful uh, in their cartridges. So we got a nice colorful cartridge right here. So let's check this out. Which is uh, in right. Cartridges do not have like a bad death grip or anything like that. Sometimes you get that. There's like a and these third-party systems, they, like, hold the car the cartridges, like, you know, in a, in a vice grip. So, that's not great. All right, here we go. All right, away, playing really well. This is the Hyperkin. And right here we got Bio Miracle Baby Upa. We're going to play this on easy, and this is very loud, so... This game looks really good on this. This is like crystal clear, no jail bars, no nothing here. And very vibrant here. And since it's a repro too, the cartridge is like very, you know, it's brand new, so. You don't have to worry about any like dust or dirt or anything like that, so. Yeah, this is a really, really good game, uh, whether you play it uh, in cartridge or uh, floppy disk format here, which we're actually going to compare this to the floppy disk version in a second here. Alright, so the key is here, you got to ricochet this thing here to get this pig here, or whatever this thing is here. I think it's a pig. I'm doing a really crappy job here. That's what we want, right there. Just gotta thread a few of those together. There we go. All right. So this game plays really, really well. Okay, let's uh, check out the Twin Famicom and contrast it to uh, actual hardware here. We're gonna actually flick this into um, uh, disc mode.
Twin Famicom is uh, like new, so it's uh, working just well, uh, just fine. Once again, you'll notice uh, the color is not as saturated, but more well-balanced, very crisp, very clear. And the audio is not as loud. And since this is the disc version, I'm going to pop this out. This is how pretty, uh, you know, discs look on the uh, Famicom disc system. Nice bright yellow. We're going to put this on the B side here. That's going to load. can hear those nice 80s gears moving. Make a comforting old friend. And again, the audio is less scratchy, a little less pingy, and not as loud. But it's, there's no easy mode on this version here, so you gotta be more careful. Um, now, also to be fair, I do believe that with some of the disc system games, those could produce better audio than cartridge games. So, you know, just be aware of that as well when we're doing this comparison. Because I don't have the authentic uh, cartridge version of Baby Oop, I just have the disc version here. In fact, the reason I got the cartridge version of this game uh, was because... I had an original Nintendo uh, disc system player, and the band on it broke, so I upgraded to a twin Famicom uh, with a brand new everything, So, and that's just been serving me very well. Alright, let's try this here. Gotta be a little more careful here because uh, we have less margin for error. Same down to like one life here. Oh man, I'm dead. All right, but you get the idea. That works just fine. Okay, so let's go to. Um, let's do a, a weird one here. Now this is uh, Final Fantasy uh, Two right here. This game does not tend to play very well, in my experience, on um, third-party Nintendo hardware here. And we're going to contrast this Final Fantasy II Repro to the actual uh, Famicom version of this game, which uh, is actually got the English-translated uh, version of the game on it. So, we're going to put this in our twin Famicom and the other version in our Miami Vice colored Hyperkin. Let's see how this plays. Well, so far so good. But you'll notice the audio's not so good here. <laughs> It sounds like somebody fell asleep on a keyboard and spilled uh, their Coke 2 on it. I'm trying to get my name in as quickly as possible so we don't have to listen to this much longer. <laughs> Things have kind of settled. No, they haven't. <laughs> I mean, the gameplay is fine, but this music is not good here at all.
All right, my ears are starting to bleed, so I'm gonna turn that off. Okay. Uh, all right, so there's Final Fantasy II. Not sounding good on the Miami Vice Famicom uh, made by Hypercam. Let's check out the twin Famicom. Here we go. And this is how this game is supposed to sound here. <laughs> Got a bunch of crazy stuff here. Let's try to get into a fight here. And this is how a fight is supposed to sound on Final Fantasy here. <laughs> leveled up files on this game here so I'm just kind of messing around here and beating up these bad guys here and you know so this game music's good same situation here the video is less saturated but very crisp so Final Fantasy 2 plays perfectly on the hardware that it was designed for and uh, not well on the Miami Vice uh, Nintendo player. Let's do another game. We'll check out this game, which is great here. Great visual novel. Uh, Jesus, Tale of the Dreadful Biomonster. If you like the movie Alien, you like anime with uh, 80s computer graphics, 80s character design, and colorful hair, then uh, this is the visual novel for the Famicom for you. Uh, so we're going to check this out on the Twin Famicom, and then we're going to check out this very pretty reproduction cartridge we have of this on the Miami Vice Famicom and by Hyperkin and see how it plays. So let's try our Hyperkin first. Pop out Final Fantasy II. Put in our English language Famicom cartridge. And... Let me reset this here. And there's no audio playing on this right now, which is not normal. There should be audio. And it's playing very choppy. Now, keep in mind, chances are you're probably not going to be playing Jesus Ch Tale of the Dreadful Bio Monster if you are buying a Hyperkin because Hyperkins are kind of made for the more casual NES gamer but the audio is messed up on this one too and this is another one of these more advanced NES games here and it's not this cartridge because this cartridge works just fine on my um, uh, NES top loader. Yeah, we're gonna stop this, my ears are bleeding again. Okay, so now let's check this out on the actual uh, one here. This is Twin Famicom. This is what the opening of this game should sound like here. See, it's not choppy at all. And this is what this game is supposed to sound and look like here. And uh, I have beaten this game with this cartridge on the Twin Famicom, so it's uh, this is how it's supposed to be. Now. 
I think it might be fun for us to uh, check out two gold-colored cartridges uh, that I own. One being the Legend of Zelda, which we'll try out on the um, Hyperkin. And then we're going to try another gold cartridge that I own, which is going to be Metal Slater Glory Reproduction Cartridge here. And Jesus is just a beautiful game. You know, you can take a look at this here. You're basically playing through a 1980s space opera OVA uh, in this game here. It's, uh, it's good stuff here. And this game, uh, it is a lot like uh, games like, uh, or animes like Lily Cat, or movies like Alien. Um, it's good stuff. Alright, technology and aliens all having ironic, destructive consequences to you and your friends. Good times are had by all. Uh, or not. So anyway, let's uh, check out these two gold cartridges here. An authentic copy of The Legend of Zelda on the Nintendo Entertainment System. And then my reproduction copy of quite possibly the greatest game for the NES, Metal Slater Glory. Let's check this out here. So we're going to start off with Zelda on the Hyperkin. And this is playing just fine here. So if you're just kind of playing your more conventional Nintendo games, this thing's compatibility is uh, not bad at all here. And again, the visuals that this thing outputs are nice. Controls well. Mind if I do. A little staticky here. But I'm able to kill bad guys at will here. Oh man, there was my projectile attack. This game looks very beautiful, playing on this. So, I mean, if you're looking for a good utilitarian Nintendo player uh, that is not expensive, I mean, this thing I think I paid like $19 for. So, for $19, I can play like the best NES Famicom games that everyone knows about, Zelda and Mario, uh, but not the best NES games that nobody knows about, like Bio Monster Jesus and Metal Slater Glory. And by nobody, I mean people in the United States. Run, Link. Run like the wind. Dead. Okay, let's check out uh, Metal Slater Glory, see how that plays here. This is a repro cart. This is a very, very, very advanced game, and this is actually so advanced that they re-released it on the Super Nintendo, Super Famicom in Japan as the final Super Famicom game, the Metal Slater Glory Director's Cut. And so this Nintendo game could functionally pass off as a Super Famicom visual novel, but was designed for the Famicom. Let's see how it plays. And it doesn't, okay? <laughs> Not playing at all. All right, but could it be there's something wrong with this cartridge? We're actually going to do something interesting here. We're going to pop this cartridge in our um, top loader down here, which is uh, proprietary Nintendo-made hardware, okay? I just dropped my Jesus repro there. That's not good. Luckily, these things are built to last. Uh, so we're going to get our uh, camera set up right here. And we're going to actually put this on channel three. And we're going to grab our dog bone. Uh, woof, woof. Okay. And turn this on. 
and it's not actually plugged in. So shut my mouth. All right, let's I'll uh, actually plug this thing in. <laughs> Get our power brick and plug in our um, top loader. And here we go, perfect. So the cartridge works fine. And this is going through RF video. So, you know, it's not going to look as uh, sharp necessarily here because it's going through RF, which has got its own warm charm to it. But you see, it's, it's playing perfectly on Nintendo hardware. This game is freaking phenomenal. This is a this is a page turner. This is definitely one of my all time favorite video games, and it is just one of the best visual novels you can ever play. I would rank it behind Snatcher and Police Knots. I love this game. And I would rank it a little bit ahead of Bio Monster Jesus. Um, but Jesus is a great game too. And you'll notice that, you know, this game has got, like, a kind of ambient noise in the background, and it sounds fine on real Nintendo hardware. Um, playing, uh, if this would were to work on the Hyperkin, my guess is it would sound very pingy and sharp. This is another game that I beat on the um, Famicom, or I'm sorry, the Top Loader uh, NES, so I know this game works, so. Okay, so there you have it, guys. Uh, what is my uh, evaluation of the uh, Miami Vice Hyperkin uh, NES player? It's good. It'll play the majority of your NES games. It'll play uh, normal repros. Uh, but if you try to get cute with the more advanced RPGs and advanced visual novels that you would, you know, try to track down, um, it's not always going to work. But if you're looking for something to play Mario and Zelda on for $20 uh, and also play most of your repros that don't have kind of crazy technology inside of them, then it'll work really well. And like I said, it's $20, $19. I think I've heard some people getting this thing for like $15. So you get what you pay for. And what you pay for is something that'll play the majority of your NES games, but not the most um, magnificent, you know, obscure NES games and Famicom games. So there you have it, guys. Until next time, my name's Noel. You take care, and I will see you in the very near future for more video game review fun and YouTube action. Bye-bye.